Welcome to the Heart Lab. This is my favorite heart drawing right here. Um, and it sort of shows a nice large cross section of the heart. Today what we're gonna do is talk about the pattern of blood flow through that heart. And I'm gonna put all these structures that are listed on the top up here are gonna come out in this uh, really fantastic Heart Lab um, lecture. It's gonna be kind of quick. So hold on, or here we go. So first I'm gonna draw blood that is blue, is gonna be deoxygenated blood. It's gonna come back in from the body and to these two places here, right? So this comes in from the body and it will come into this chamber. Um, and then from this chamber, it will flow down into this chamber. This is the right atrium to the left ventricle, out of the left ventricle through this semilunar valve out this way to the lungs. So this will be a lung, and this will be a lung over here. Okay, and then when we get the blood coming back from the lungs, so it'll have a little lung here, it'll come back in this way, right into this left atrium side, and then I'm gonna draw this blood as being bright red. So I should write this as long over here, bright red and bright this. It's not that the blood is actually red and blue in these two conditions. It's slightly brighter red when it has more oxygen in it, but it never really turns blue. That's just the color of your veins. So, but the blood's gonna go into this left atrium through this valve and into the left ventricle and then it's gonna get pumped out of the ventricle through this valve up here through this thing, which we call the aortic arch, right? And out to the body. So again, it all goes body out here, body to your muscles and such. All right, so that is the pattern of the circulation of the blood. Notice that it's important that the two sides of the heart are independent. We have this nice dark area that's between them. There's a septum here, a wall, that actually keeps blood separate on the right and left side of the heart. So it enters simultaneously into the two atria on the top and then is pumped out simultaneously by a beat from the ventricles on the bottom. Let's go through and label each of these structures. Um, when the blood first comes in, it comes in through these things called the um, This one up here is the superior vena cava, which I'll draw a short line to, which is this structure. All right, and then we have another one called the inferior vena cava, which will be this one down here. All right, both of these are veins. There we go. Both of these are veins that bring deoxygenated blood back into the body. And we can tell veins from arteries because veins um, bring blood to the heart. And we know that arteries send blood away from the heart. So you can remember that A for artery and A for away and for venir or ven in Spanish, you can mean ven, the V, if you like to remember that. But sometimes the blood leaving the heart in an artery is not oxygenated, and we'll see that happen as well. So the next structure that we're going to look at is going to be the right atrium, and that is a chamber, and that is this chamber right here, so I'm just going to drop it right in there, and you see that is then the right atrium and blood flows from that holding space, essentially, right down to the right ventricle, which will be this space here. Excellent. On the way, it's gonna pass through a valve. Now that valve, in this case, is called the tricuspid valve, and I'm gonna label it here. You, you can see it with this little space here. Right? Now that valve opens and closes as a one-way door. And so that one-way door allows blood to flow only in this direction. And so if the right ventricle squeezes and pushes the door closed, these two can close like this and sealing this space so the blood will flow directly out. And actually to keep those doors closed, there are some small tendon structures that you can see in some of our specimens in the lab 
that are called these things we call chordae tendone. And even though this is probably not listed in your lab manual, I still think it's really cool because the chordae tendone actually hold that door closed. You know, you can see them right here and over there. They're like strings that keep the door from blowing backwards. And so the door you could think of as a door like to your bedroom, for example. And so the door swings open into this right ventricle, but it doesn't backswing out. That's because when the ventricle contracts, it's going to create a bunch of pressure and it's going to draw drive blood forward through the next valve. And the next valve is going to be called a semilunar valve. And that's this one right over here. And I think the way to look at that is I can try to label that for you here with my pulmonary semilunar valve. I'm just going to put the label on this side and I'm going to draw a line to it. It's that structure right there. All right, so then it goes through that valve and then it's going to go out through this artery that's departing the, departing the heart and you'll notice it's drawn in blue but nonetheless it's still departing the heart so it is an artery. It's going away and that is this artery here, we're gonna call the pulmonary artery. Oh, I like that. Okay, so that is the pulmonary artery which goes to the lungs. That is the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood. So that's interesting, right? Um, and now it comes back then, the blood comes back from the lungs, um, and we see that on, on this side over here, you see it labeled by lung, and it's gonna come back through something that's gonna be called the pulmonary vein. And so it's uh, because it's coming back to the heart now. We'll call it the pulmonary vein. Boonk. That looks pretty good. Okay. And then it's going to, the blood then travels into the left ventricle. Oops, sorry, left atrium. And here's the left atrium label. I'm going to drag it right down and put it in there. Left atrium. There's another valve to go through, which will be called the bicuspid or mitral valve. Both of these terms are used to describe this particular valve. So um, either bicuspid or mitral is correct. Um, and again, that valve is just, it's a one-way door that allows blood to move from the atrium to the ventricle. So it's right here, this little valve structure. And when we're down in this ventricle, we should label the ventricle, which will be called the left ventricle. There are also little cords on there. Um, I could draw them in, I guess. The chordae tendone are also there, holding these so that when the door closes, um, it gets held uh, and keeps it, it keeps the valve from prolapsing or collapsing back into the left atrium. All right, from that point, we're gonna move out of the left ventricle and into the, um, or through, I should say, the aortic semilunar valve. I have to draw a line to this one because it is this moon structure over here. All right, that's the aortic semilunar valve. And then we go through what is called the aorta, which is this very large sort of garden hose type of, of uh, structure um, that's a great big artery that carries the blood to the, all the body parts. Um, you see these exits near the top up here where it says body there. These exits here will go to the um, to the head and the jugular veins, for example, and upper body, and then exiting out the bottom, you'll see um, that goes to, to the legs, for example, in the abdomen. And that is the complete flow of the um, blood through the heart, and those are the structures. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit more information about um, some pathologies and um, problems with the heart and some health problems. I've, you notice I've left out one term up here, which is called the coronary artery term, because it isn't on this map. Oh, bummer. Um, where it actually comes out, it comes out somewhere down in here. Whoops. Comes out somewhere down in here and actually wraps out around the heart itself. And these are arteries that, that travel around the heart. And so if you were to see a heart drawing something like this, you would see on the outside of the heart, you would see these arteries that are branching out and they're actually feeding, um, they feed the heart muscle itself blood. 
And if one of those gets a blockage in it, and they're really fairly small, then that can cause what's called a heart attack, which means the muscles die in that area because they're not getting enough oxygen from the blood. And the heart is constantly beating, so not having oxygen means it seizes up and it stops. Um, to prevent that kind of heart attack or treat it, there's a bypass surgery is done where they, they go ahead and they just run another artery, they take one out of the leg or the arm, and they bridge that area. And so I could zoom in on that and see what that really looks like. So when basically you're taking a single artery that's running like this that gets a block of, 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 I always imagine it to be bacon grease, but it's not bacon grease. Really, it's atherosclerosis, which is a more complicated process by which these are blocked by high cholesterols and fats in the blood. And what they would essentially do is just run a pipe around it like this so that now you can run fresh blood down into the new, uh, down to the downstream areas. And so that would be called a bypass um, and bypass surgery. Um, let's take a look at a couple of other pathologies I've listed. One is called the heart murmur. Now, technically a heart murmur is any sound, right? Any sound that the heart makes. Now, and I should say any unusual sound. So the heart beating, the lub-dub sound, comes from the closing of the valves. So when the two atria squeeze together, they push blood in to the ventricles, right? And when the ventricles contract, so these two ventricles here, I'll draw a big circle around them, these two contract together, and they, when they do, they cause these valves, the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve to slam shut, and that makes the um, lub sound of the lub dub. And that sound is the valves closing, it's not actually the heart beating. And the dub sound comes from the semilunar valves closing, which of course will close when the, um, the atria squeeze and put blood into the um, ventricles. So you have a blub, 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 and those are the shutting of the valves. The two ventricle valves shut at the same time. The two atrial or the two semilunar valves shut at the same time. And so um, if you have a sound that is not that sound, that's an unusual sound, that's a heart murmur. Sometimes the valves themselves have deposits on them so they don't shut perfectly. So they might get a stenotic valve, for example, which becomes stiffened and calcified. And then instead of shutting like a nice pair of lips, I imagine your mouth shutting like up, 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 up. it's a nice claw good shut. Instead of that, it goes and you get some backflow. It sounds like blood whirring and whooshing back in the backward direction. If that happens, that is called a murmur. And if it's a lot of blood going the backwards, then you lose output. And so if those doors don't seal perfectly, um, you can lose cardiac output. So a murmur is blood squirting out where it shouldn't be, and it makes a whistling or whirring sound, typically. Um, the last thing to mention is the beating of the heart is controlled by um, a couple of nodes. We have an AV node and an SV node. And I don't usually put them on the drawing because what they are, they're electrical signal, um, they're, they're rhythm control, right? So the heart beats in such a way that each of the cells in the heart has has, has little pumps on it that create a gradient, and the cells in the heart themselves are actually, even when they're disorganized, like in a Petri dish, they will beat because each cell has pumps that create a gradient that is then released and creates a gradient that is released, which causes this contraction. Um, in order, if the heart is not organized, every cell will beat to its own rhythm, which is a, a shuddering arrhythmic heart, which just shakes, and that we would call tachycardia. And so tachycardia is prevented by the body when the SV nodes and the AV nodes, which are located in, in these areas here on the heart, actually can control these contractions by discharging all of the cells at the same time. And by causing them to be discharged, they contract and then they all recharge and contract at the same rate. That is why they use the paddles. If you use the paddles in the... Uh, uh, when people have a stopped heart, they'll electrocute the heart, and what they're really doing is not starting the heart, but they're stopping it. And the idea being that if every cell is discharged 
and it contracts, then they will all recharge and begin beating at the same time. And that is the lecture about the heart.